to it now. Is it okay for Christians to drink alcohol? Don't worry. Ain't nobody following you. See, this is one of the, this is one of the strange things about the church and Christianity. We get tight about so much stuff we don't have to get tight about. So, but I understand there's a lot of cultural things that are played into that. There are a lot of traditional things that are played in, into that. So that's why when I saw that question of the questions I got, I was like, I'm going to go ahead and get that one and o- open up with that one. I had a good sermon. At least I thought it was a good sermon. And uh, it, was, it was when Jesus was talking about you don't put new wine in old wine skins, I, you know, I preached that sermon at least five years ago. I've been, I've been pastor seven years. Uh, I preached that sermon like five years ago. You know why I remember that sermon? Because the congregation was so tight. Just that I was talking about wine. And using it as an analogy for what Jesus was talking about. Uh, listen, I know Christians drink. So here is so here's the question. Is it okay? Is it acceptable for a Christian to drink wine or to drink an alcoholic beverage? Uh, let's put this to a survey. No, I ain't gonna put it to a survey. No, 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 I'm not gonna put it to a survey. No, no, I'm, I'm not, not gonna put it to a survey. No. <laughs> so let me say it this way. In the book of John, because let's speak biblically about, uh, about this, not just. Pastor Stackhouse opinion. Let's speak biblically about this. In the book of John, it opens up John of the four Gospels. You, you have Matthew, you have Mark, you have Luke, and you have John. As John opens up, John opens up not with the genealogy of Jesus. John opens up with the theology of Jesus. So that's why in, uh, in the book of John, it does not start out talking about who begot who. When John starts out, he wants to tell you the essence and the theological concepts of not just who Jesus is, but what Jesus is. So, he opens up, and by the time you get to, well, maybe it's the second chapter of John, Jesus is already a full-grown man. And he's already in his ministry. He, he's not calling disciples, but he's, he's already in his ministry. And when he's in his ministry, and the, and the book of John unfolds, the first time we see Jesus, where is he? He's at a wedding. All right. First time we see Jesus, according to the book of John, he is at a wedding. And a dilemma arises. And the dilemma that arises at the wedding is what? Anybody know? They ran out of what? They ran out of wine. And Jesus does not say, oh, I I am the son of God. I cannot be in the same vicinity of wine. Not only does he not say I can't be in the vicinity of wine, when they run out of wine, he makes a miracle and gives them more wine. So if wine or alcoholic beverage in itself is sinful, then why would Jesus give them more of it? So, okay, so right now, we can see from the outset it is that uh, Jesus, Son of of God, perfect, he who knew no sin, would not be at a place and not be giving people more of something that is sinful in his nature. All right? Are y'all still walking with me so far? So, it is not the alcoholic beverage. It is not the wine that is sinful. Y'all know this. We talked about this a little bit uh, uh, two weeks ago. It is the it is the overindulgence of anything that becomes sinful. I know y'all like, thank you, Pastor. I'm going to the ABC store when I leave here. <laughs> you, y'all like, you, you like, hey, Pastor, you can move on to the next question. That's all I needed to know. That's all I needed to know. Just move on to the next one. It is... <laughs> <laughs> They're like, you don't need to expound anymore. That's, that's, the only, 
That's the only answer I need. Move on. But let me just give you a little bit more biblical context for it. When Jesus is sitting at the table with his disciples for the third time in what we call the upper room. Y'all hear me talk about this every first Sunday. First Sunday is in a couple of days. I'll be talking about it again. He, Jesus sits at the table. They are having the, the, uh, the Passover meal. He breaks bread, said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take, eat. After he takes the bread, he picks up a cup, and in the cup it has? There's wine in the cup. And Jesus gives, he thanks God for the wine. It's in the Bible, y'all. Don't nobody care about how uncomfortable your grandmama was with her. I'm talking about the Bible. So, takes that cup, give God thanks, and say, here, all y'all get a sip. Reminds you of some of your uncles that sit that at the, they go off to the side a little bit. Yeah, it's in a brown bag. Everybody get a hit. You understand what I'm saying? It is not the wine itself. It is the overindulgence in wine. All of it tastes, all of it tastes nasty to me. Wine, beer, whatever. And I you're like, how can it taste nasty if you never tasted it? I've tasted it. Let me tell y'all a story about the first time I tasted beer. So this is what happened. Nah. <laughs> okay. Uh, as for as for verses, now. Uh, now listen, I want to give you some verses because we've talked about the fact that wine, alcoholic beverages in itself are not, are not sinful. It is the overindulgence. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18, let me give you some, uh, some scriptural context for this. Ephesians 5 and 18, it says, uh, Ephesians 5 and 18, and do not get drunk with wine, for this is debauchery. That's a fancy word, debauchery. Yeah. Uh, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Proverbs 20 and 1, wine is a mockery, strong drink, is a brawler. I think it calls it a brawler because some people get to drink and they want to fight. And whoever is led astray by it is not wise. I can't stand talking to drunk people. I ain't the only one in here. They be wanting to have the longest, deepest conversations, start crying and all that kind of stuff, and he's like, like, Lord, have mercy. And then the worst part of it all, they don't waste your time with all that drunk talk. And I, you remember every word. Next day, they don't remember nothing. Okay, y'all never had any conversation with anybody that was drunk. Yeah, can't stand it. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6 and 10. Nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Galatians 5 and 21. Envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these, I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Watch what you indulge in. You can indulge in too much of anything and it becomes sinful. Anything. Anything. So, uh, govern yourself accordingly. Govern yourself accordingly and uh, do the best you can to not. Uh, and, then, and then some of you, some of, so I, I can't say us because I'm not in, in But some of y'all need to be honest with yourself and know that uh, you, you don't stop at one drink. You don't stop until you wake up the next day. So just be honest with yourself. Know, know yourself and know what you can handle. Know yourself and know what you can handle. And if that is a struggle that you have, uh, there is freedom in Christ. 
go to uh, AA, get help, and know that you are not the first person that loved God that had that struggle. You will not be the last person that loved God to have that struggle. And there is freedom in Christ. So if, you, if that's a struggle of yours, don't take what I'm saying right now and start that habit all over again. Matter of fact, I'm praying that God, that God helps you get released from it. Now, all right. All right.